What, a, what an amazing morning we're having. Just uh, the, the sin to be the focus is on the blood of Jesus and the songs that we sang that, that Freddie chose there. It's about our salvation, about being appreciative, about the power of God, the anointing. And then Joe came with that amazing communion message and uh, reminded us again what it means. And we've got, to, we've got to have that understanding, haven't we, what God has made available for us. And then, Tom, the announcements there that there's that, uh, those special uh, giftings at the back there where teachings and things like that. And on the other side, there's, there's uh, silver beet Popeye's food. And so you need the spiritual and you need the natural food. So, so uh, if you don't eat, you die. If you don't feed on God's word, you die. And uh, if God doesn't become God to us, well, what hope have we got? There's no hope. So I'm excited today about what the Lord is doing. And so, Father, I want to just give you all the praise. I want to give you all the glory. We, we're believing for you to move by your Spirit. We're believing for you to touch our lives afresh. And, and my God, we, we, more than anything else, we want to honor Jesus Christ in this house. We want to honor Him and for everything that He's done for us. What He's done is amazing. But, Father, I pray that we would have an understanding so that we could actually move in what you've done and, 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 and be what you want us to be. And for that, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. How many people believe that God's about to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think? That God wants to show himself strong, that God wants to break through and, uh, and, and make everything that he has given us uh, to see it manifested in his church, see it operating in his church, to see the power of God, to see the anointing of God, to see the people rising up in victory and, and ruling and reigning. And while we were away on our break, I, I was there just meditating and thinking about the church and that. And I, and I said, Lord, I, I just don't want to do church. You know, too often now we've got this, this concept of what church is. Friend, it's not just coming to a meeting and singing a few songs and listening to a massage or, or a message rather and, and, uh, and, you know, just feeling a little bit better and then going home. It's to be equipped. It's to be empowered. It's to, it's to be able to be focused and, and know the anointing on our lives that we can go out and be the church, go out and do what God wants us to do. Uh, Tom preached a message the other, uh, on when we were on our break, whatever it was we were having there, uh, about when God, what was the last word? When he comes, when God comes, when God comes. And, and you know, how many people believe that God wants to come to his church? He wants to come to you as an individual. He wants to come and impact our lives. He wants to empower us. And, and so this morning, that message of Tom's really impacted me greatly. And it challenged me about when God comes, what will he find when he comes around my life? What will he find when, when he comes to the church? Will he find faith? Will he find the people that are on fire for him? Will he find people that are, that are excited and enthusiastic and, and, and just wanting to see the power of God manifested? Or will he find somebody that's just happy to be nothing? I said to God, I said, God, I love church. I want to come to church, but God, I don't want to come to church if it's just going to be the same. I, don't, I just don't want to be the same. Something's got to change. Something's got to change. And, you know, we've been reminded that Jesus said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So if anybody's got to change, it's us. And we've got to allow the anointing, and we've got to allow the expectancy, and and whatever God wants to do to permeate in our being to rise us up. So I want to speak a little bit this morning about when God moves. When God moves. How many people want to move of God? <laughs> you know, sometimes we can just pray, God, will you do this? Will you do that? And we come to prayer meetings and we try to wind God up like those little dolls that you, you put on the ground and then he runs around doing everything that we want him to do. That's not what God's about. That's not what it's all about, trying to do that. It's, it's somehow or other finding what God has for our lives, what God wants us to do. When God moves, He moves in mysterious ways. He's already told us, He said, My ways are not your ways. 
My ways are higher than your ways. And yet somehow or other, we try to bring God into our way of thinking. We try to bring God into to think like, you know, or to act like we think he should act. When God comes, he will act totally differently. When God comes, he's, he's going to move mysteriously. In John 4, 24, it says this, God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Though we're body, soul, and spirit, this body will not go to heaven. It will go back to the earth. It will go back to dust. But there's a spirit man, the real man. The Bible says there's an outward man that is perishing, but there's an inward man that is being renewed day by day. This inward man has to be energized, not by natural thinking, but by spirit thinking. My natural body will be energized by natural thinking. There's a spirit person inside there that will only respond to spirit. It cannot, will never respond to natural. Jesus is a spirit. To understand his sayings, they have to be spiritually discerned. See, this is a whole, perhaps a whole new way of thinking because we've got to break out of and break into. We've got to change the way we think. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man does not not receive the things of the Spirit. Doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they have to be spiritually discerned. See, when God comes, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when he came, he came with total, how do I put it? not even thinking of what man might be thinking. He just wanted to do his own thing. How many people know that God wants to do his thing? God wants to do his thing. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 is God is moving in response to 120 people praying in an upper room. God will always come in response. He's looking for a people. He's looking for something. God is searching. And, you know, I would imagine that this, this group of people, there are times there when they were saying, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to sit on his right hand? Who's going to sit on his left hand? Is this the time when you're going to establish a kingdom and get rid of all those that oppress us? And they had all these natural thoughts going through their mind. But finally, he gets his 120 people. The Bible says that they're in one accord. They're in one accord. It wasn't whether I'm going to get a rise next week. It wasn't whether I'm going to have a better job. or It wasn't about this or about that. It was all about God. It was all about Him. It was all about Him. Uh, people reaching out to Him. We need you, Jesus. We, and, and He had their total attention. Friend, there's so many things that get in our way today that take our minds off the purpose of God. And we can be so busy doing the things of this world that we don't have time for the things of God. Our natural man has overtaken and is in control. But I want to tell you, friends, God, somewhere or other, as we're here in worship, as the presence of God came, as the musicians played, as they sang, Something was going on in the realm of the Spirit, and you could sense as we were doing that, there was something on the inside of us that began to rise. You know what I'm talking about? Because that's the Spirit of God. That's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God calling, calling to us, come a little bit closer. And I, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I can only speak about myself, but there's something there as, I, as we were doing that. I just wanted to surrender. The words were talking about surrendering to Him. Your will, not my will. All this sort of, and, and something on the inside, you see, because God has to connect with us. When He comes, He's not just going to tickle you. He's not just going to tell you things that perhaps you need to hear. He, he wants to draw you to Himself. He wants to be able to come into your life and in, 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 in my life in such a dynamic way, such a powerful way. They're praying in an upper room. 
People crying out to God. Oh, friend, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, what will change the whole atmosphere over Australia? What will change the atmosphere over, over the Sunshine Coast, over your life and my life, is when we can connect with God. 120 people crying out to God. When we can get on our faces again. When we can get hold of God again. When we, when we can say, God, I want you more than anything else. I'm just not going to ask you to help me with my arthritis. I'm going to ask you, would you come? Would you come? You see, when he comes, when he comes into your life like that, when he comes, there will come a change in your life. And as Joe was preaching this morning, as we took that little bit of bread, as he looked at that bit of bread, it says it's only a cracker, but it's a reminder. And as our reminders start to remind ourselves of the greatness of our God and the goodness of our God and the awesomeness of our God, all of a sudden something will click in and healing will come into your life. Otherwise, it's just another thing that we say. It's just another thing that we do. It's got no real meaning and no real manifestation, but God wants to manifest Himself with power. It says on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound that came from heaven. A sound, something from heaven came down to earth. Amen. It was a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole place where they were seated. It wasn't just something natural. I don't know whether they were expecting it. I don't know what they were really believing for. They just wanted God. And all of a sudden, there's a, there's, there's, and God came. There was a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole place. And all of a sudden, there was tongues of fire that sat upon their heads, and they began to speak with other tongues. They began to speak with, a, with another language. The power of God got around their lives. They began to change. Friend, I don't know about you, but I want change. Would you put up your hand this morning for change in your life? I want change in my life. I want to be changed from glory to glory. I want change to come into my life that will change me. Change came into their lives. The Bible says that when this sound occurred, the people were gathered together. It caused people to come. Friend, I want to tell you, there's only one thing that's going to cause a revival, and that is a move of the Spirit of God. I don't care whether you're selling, uh, whether you're giving free cappuccinos or free this or free that. It will never bring a revival. It might bring numbers, but it will never, ever bring about a revival that God wants to bring about upon our nation and upon this land. Amen. Do you believe that today? Only a move of the Spirit will change this nation. Only a move of the Spirit will change the church. We need a move of God. Here's this church. They were there and they started to cry out. Now all of a sudden, they're empowered. It was strange. It wasn't normal. What they saw wasn't what was normal. It wasn't what was going on in the, in the, in the temple. <laughs> was a new thing, amen. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, God said, I want to do a new thing. I want to do a new thing. Will, will we allow Him to do a new thing? Will we let Him do a new thing in our lives? Will, will, or will we balk? Or will we be like some of the others there that as they watched, as they saw it, it says there that, that they, they were dismayed and, and, and they mocked and some said they're drunk and some said this and some said that. But let me say this, you see, God wanted to do something and He spoke about it in the prophet Joel many, many years before and God wanted to do it. I tell you what, God wants to pour out His Spirit upon Australia. He wants to do it. But you see, until He gets a people that are prepared to go His way and do it His way, nothing will change. God, God all, ever since... Joel prophesied that God wanted to do it, but he had to find a bunch of people that he could do it through. And here are these people, 120 of them in an upper room, and they're worshiping God, and now the power of God comes upon them. And Peter, as people mocked, and as they said this and said that, but now Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, you see, he was, there was an expectancy on him. And he said, they're not drunk as you suppose. 
seeing it's only the third hour, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And friend, I want to stand up here one day and I want to be able to declare as we see the power of God, as we see blind eyes open and the cripples running around the place, as we see the altars filled with people uh, getting saved, as we see people in the, in the aisles falling on their face and crying out to the living God, I want to be able to stand up here and declare, this is what God said He would do. Not what man said he could do. Man has run the show too long. It's time for God to let loose. Amen. It takes a move of the Spirit. In other words, when the Lord speaks, we have to change gear in the way we think, in the way we hear. You cannot understand the things of the Spirit with the natural mind. You'll never understand it. The words of Jesus must be spiritually discerned. In one John, in, sorry, in John 4, 7, Jesus starts the conversation with a Samaritan woman. He says, give me a drink. He said, if you knew the gift of God who is with you, you would ask me for a drink. Woman tries to understand what Jesus is saying. How many people know that Jesus was talking spirit talk? If you knew who is talking to you, you would ask me for a drink. I've asked you for a drink, but if you knew, if you knew, you would ask me. And the woman tries to act and understand with a natural mind, and, and she says, Sir, you have nothing to draw from with, and the well is deep. I believe, church, we need to know who it is who is in our midst. We need a fresh revelation of who it is who is in our midst. I believe if we had a revelation of that, we would change the way we think. We need to apply words, these words to ourselves. We Re really knew the gift of God who is in our midst. You see, friend, He is the King of kings. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the commander-in-chief. We, we might ask differently and act differently. You don't have to plead with God. You don't have to plead and try to get His arm behind His back so that He will do something for you. You've just got to quote Him. You've just got to know Him. You see, Jesus wants your neighbor, your family, your loved ones saved, healed and delivered more than you do. So why are we trying to get him in a good mood so he might do it for us? No, he need, you, what he needs is people who know him that will stand up and make a de declaration and break the strongholds that are binding them, that, 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 that will loosen them to hear the word of God, to be born again, to be saved, whatever it might be that they need to have today. If we knew the gift of God who was with us, if only we knew, He is the King, the Commander-in-Chief. You see, the way we see Jesus, the way you see Him will determine our level of faith. In John 7, 37, 
He says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood in their midst and he cried with a loud voice, if you're thirsty, come to me. The last day of the feast. Friend, Jesus is not putting blockades up like the governments are today to stop people from crossing the borders. He is not trying to make it difficult for you or me to enter in and, and, and get a touch from the living God. He is crying out with a loud voice. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never, ever changes. And he's crying out to you today, if you're thirsty, come to me. And that's what I believe he got the 120 to come to him. Now, if he can get us just to come to him, come to him. We talk about the prayer meetings. We talk about different things. And, and some, oh, man, it's so cold. And so this, friend, I want to tell you, somehow or other, God, we've got to break those strongholds down and come into his presence and join together and begin to pray and begin to seek his face and believe for a move of the Spirit of God. Amen. And I'm going to make a declaration. There is no restrictions of numbers to the prayer meeting, only the church meeting. <laughs> if they come in to arrest me, I'll say, are you going to arrest me for praying for you? <laughs> if you knew the gift of God... See, this woman was a God-fearing woman. She claimed Jacob uh, as her spiritual father. She said her father's worshipped on this mountain, etc. You say to worship over here. She, she knew the Messiah was coming, who was called Christ. But she needed a revelation of what the Spirit was saying. She needed a revelation of who is in our midst. Church, can I say this? I need a fresh revelation of who Jesus really is. So I can worship him in spirit and in truth. So when I come to him, I'm, I'm not coming to some, some person that can't hear me, that can't meet with me, that can't meet what I'm praying for, that can't do whatever I, whatever's going on, but I have an understanding that through my God, He is awesome. He can do whatever He wants. And then I'm coming to the commander-in-chief. I'm coming to the king of kings. I'm coming to the Lord of lords. I'm coming to the champion of champions. And the one who has defeated Satan, who has healed and paid the price for my sin, my sickness, my disease, my negativity, my failure, my defeat, whatever it is, he's paid the price in full and he's waiting for me to come. He says, hey, come to me and I will. See, it's the way we approach him. I'm not sure if you can heal me, but Jesus, would you? <laughs> I believe, Jesus, you paid the price for sickness and disease. I pray today for the power of Almighty God to come into my body, my natural body, and deliver me from sin and sickness and disease and, and stand on your ground and believe God Friend, I want to tell you who oh, the way you see him is the level of faith you will have. God is wanting to open our eyes, amen? The way you see him. They, the, the, Jesus was healing people and delivering people and doing stuff, and what they saw was a carpenter's son. Well, I want to tell you, friends, he came for a little while as a carpenter, but I want to tell you today he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my God. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my everything. And what have you asked? If you believe, you will receive. There's obviously been a lot of trouble with our way we believe. Only believe all things are possible if you knew the gift of God. 
She knew the Messiah was coming. She needed that revelation to hear what the Spirit of God was saying. Then he said these words, I am he who speaks to you. I am he. I'm the one you're looking for. Friend, I don't know what you're looking for, but it's Jesus. Amen. Need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Even the disciples had trouble in this story. He was speaking to this woman when they went away to, to get something to eat. And they come back with the food and, and Jesus said these words. He said, I have food <laughs> that you know not of. See, when he comes, he doesn't speak normal, natural thinking. He speaks spirit. And to be able to understand it, you've got to understand the spirit. They had, they had trouble shifting out of the natural thinking uh, into spirit thinking. Verse 31 says, Rabbi, eat. He said, I have food to eat of which you do not know. The disciples' response is, has anybody bought him something to eat? <laughs> That's a natural response, amen. But too often we've just brought a natural response to a spiritual saying. We try to understand it with our thinking. We try to say, well, God, if you want to heal me, now I, I just got to get myself so perfect. I got, I, got to, I got to do this and I got to do that. And I've got to, I, no, 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 no. You just got to come to Him. You come to Him and the power of God hits you and heals you and delivers you and changes your life forever. I've said once before and I'll say it again, we all need to change. We need to change the way we think. Or we're bound by natural thinking. Has anybody bought him something to eat? Maybe that we, the church, have only heard the natural things and not what the Spirit is saying. I believe that's why it's important to pray. It's important to worship, to read the Word. Spend time with the Lord, pray in tongues, whatever, whatever it takes, amen? We just get too busy working for the man, pleasing the flesh. Our flesh was never meant to control the spirit man. I've got so much that I, I'm going to hold it here and take it on from next week. So I only get halfway through this next bit and I don't want to do that. Is that okay? How many people can catch my drift? Can you hear what the Spirit is saying? Come on. Are you a candidate? You want God to touch you? There's somebody here today and you've got a condition in your neck. It's in your neck on this, this side here. Who's that person quickly? Come on, sir. I believe God wants to touch you. There might be another person as well. Thank you, Father. Power of God's in this place right now. Somebody here also, you, you've got a, like a band around your head. It's like a band around your head. Who's that person? Quickly. This, I mightn't be explaining that. It's like a tightness over your head. It's like a tightness on your forehead. Around that part. You might be new here today and you might be shy. Who's that person? Quickly. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for you right now. Oh, Jesus. I believe you're here. I believe you're here. I believe you're here. Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I'm asking you to touch that person anyhow. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, I'm asking you to touch them, Father. I'm asking you to deliver us, Father. I'm asking you to move by your Spirit over our lives, Father. Oh, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. There's somebody here right now and you've got a condition that's in your stomach and you feel, you feel like a, there's, a, there's something going on in there and you just need a, to be released. Who's that person? Quickly. Come on. Let's believe God. Let's believe God in Jesus' name. We need Jesus to touch us. Jesus touch us. Don't lift up your hands right now. Touch me, Jesus. Would you touch me? Would you touch me? Would you touch me? Touch me, Jesus. Touch me. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. 
I will give my life to you. When God comes, he mightn't come the way you think he'll come, but he will come. He will come. He will do things, mighty things. Friend, I'm believing for a move of God's Spirit. I'm believing for signs and wonders and miracles. I'm believing that we will see, and, and friends, I've been around long enough now. I've, I've been in meetings when I've, I've seen hundreds upon hundreds, even thousands of people falling under the power of God as God just comes in and fills the room. On the day of Pentecost, the power of God was so manifested that there was fire and there was goodness knows what going on. But I want to tell you that same Jesus that did those things, he wants to come again. He wants to come into his church. He wants to ignite us with fire, with power. He wants to touch us in such a way that it is impossible to say it, it, was, it was a natural thing. But you see, when God comes, people want to say natural things. And on the day of Pentecost, they said, hey, they're drunk, they're this, they're that. No, it was a move of God's Spirit. When Peter stood up that day and he started to say and speak the word of God with authority, people all of a sudden had, a, had an encounter with the Spirit of God. And it says that 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ that day. It's got to be a move of the Spirit. It can't be this or it can't be that. It can't, can't just be going to listen to a good preacher or a good this or a good that. We must have the Spirit of God. We must have the Spirit of God. We must have the Spirit of God. Amen? But if you're here today and, and you don't know Jesus, give Him your life today. Father, we just thank you today for who you are. We thank you for your Son, Jesus. I pray, Father, that we would have a revelation of Him. That when we pray, we're not praying to somebody that's afar off. But, Lord, you're closer than a brother that we're praying to somebody that loves us so much and that you're near us, you're with us, you walk with us. My God, you hear us and you will, hear, you will deliver us. And Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.